Hello everyone, I'm Tom 64 And I'm THD. And welcome back to Alola, I guess. This is Pokemon Ultra Sun, and it were not a year to the day ago that uh, THD left Hellfire comes. Ah, uh, what, what a time, what an adventure. Now we're going to take a, a look at the other side of Alola. I guess we fell for a warp hole. Yeah, that's the gimmick for this playthrough. It's going to get old really fast. Pokemon's been kind of dabbling in the whole alternate dimensions kind of thing, and that was kind of what I was looking at it here when I saw that they were announcing Ultra Sun. I was like, okay, well, maybe it's like a D4C kind of situation, because apparently there's some new stuff happening, and I'm going to lay my cards out here on the table for that. Um, I wanted to play this to get an idea of the new story stuff, but after a while, and this was my fear when they announced Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, that it was going to get really similar to the other game, and as I started to play it, I kind of got that sense that this is content that maybe should have been in the game originally. So I have to admit, I played a little bit of this. I did not really get that far, because I'm just like, I really don't have the time to build all this shit up again. Yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I get you, mate. I'm, uh, I'm about two islands deep. Apparently the proper new stuff comes when you're on the final island, as Pokemon is wont to do with uh, new content. Content. So we'll say right off the bat, this is more platinum than it is Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. So uh, you're going to see little bits that are new sprinkled, you know, throughout. But uh, for the most part, it's going to be the same experience. We'll just be reliving our Alola adventures. It's kind of like a whole Game of the Year edition kind of deal, you know, where they take all the DLC, they jam it in the main thing. See, here are the new DLC characters. <laughs> I'm glad they're finally introduced, but it's like they package it back in and they sell you the game again, but this time it's got all the shit on it that was supposed to be in it the first time around, you know what I mean? Cynical to the last, Mr. THD. Even if you're not in the group, the cynicism still remains. It's as good an intro as ever, and yet those uh, spoiler people, I can't say exactly who they are right now, but I will say, I think I prefer their Ultra Moon counterparts a little bit more, because we've got a fucking lolly here, and then Tom don't play that shit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, three months later. Will it be exactly the same? Who knows? I'm not seeing any anomalies structurally. Yeah, there's no meteors yet. Oh, okay, that's just a joke. I don't actually know if they hit the place with fucking meteors, all right? Like, a lot of this is going to be discovery for me with the new story elements, because, again, I did not get far in this. Ah. But a lot of the beats are playing out the same from what I have seen. So a lot of it is just kind of uh, reliving the experience, basically, which isn't too bad. Like I said, I really liked uh, Pokemon Sun, so that's okay. Yeah, I think um, Gen 7 has been my favorite gen since, I don't know, probably... <sighs> Gen 3, like, 4 was too slow. I'm really looking forward to the inevitable remakes of Diamond and Pearl. Um, Gen 5 is... It's kind of weird. I don't know how to describe it. It's good. I remember liking it. But, you know, it's um, it was the first one in a while to go Western-centric as opposed to Eastern. And uh, that's going to be a little bit divisive. The tastes are going to be eclectic. And I don't know what the fuck happened with Gen 6. Um, X has not really held up all that well for me. I like it. Don't get me wrong. But uh, that and the kind of disappointment of auras. Mm, there's a Switch, by the way. Buy it today! <laughs> yeah, that Wii U, what's that? You know, that uh, that mysterious console that's wiped mysteriously from Nintendo's records. I know, it's strange. Mm, yeah, did you know the Switch has almost outsold the Wii U in its first year, as opposed to what the Wii U did in 5? Well, let's be honest, that's not exactly a difficult feat, considering the success of the Wii U, you know? One thing that I kind of miss from the Pokemon games, I can't recall whether it's in, like, the original Sun and Moon, or it will pop up somewhere in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but the ability to decorate your room always appealed to me back in Gen 2, so uh, it would be nice if I could, I don't know, exchange my bed, put a Super Game Boy, you know, in the SNES instead of the Switch, oh, and I got an autograph from a gym leader in Kanto. It doesn't say who it is, you ambiguous fuckers. It's probably from Blaine. Nobody likes Blaine. <laughs> uh, 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 whoa, excuse you. I like old man Blaine, okay? His anime counterpart, not so much. But the uh, the game dude, he is a game dude. And he is so rude. Man, you just want to redecorate your room so you can sleep in a car. You know? I mean, I totally get that vibe from you. <laughs> Wait, what? what? Uh, have I led you down a path somewhere during our friendship that made you believe I am a hobo of some sort? <laughs> I guess I want to meet a low-end Pokemon again. Ugh. 
I will say I'm not trying to pick the opposite choice to what I did in the original playthrough because I can't remember what choices I picked, especially for such you know minute stuff as I guess I want to see Pokemon. But uh, I'll try and keep you on your toes, keep you guessing. Uh, there, are, like I said, there are a few changes here. One thing they've immediately changed is like the default design for like your trainer. For that, mm. I really, really don't like what they did with the male trainer. I think. It's just, I mean, you got, like, the wife beater on and the shorts, but then, then you're, like, so unconfident in your swim trunks so that you got leggings underneath that. Like, oh, no, my skin. It's so sensitive. It's just, it doesn't work. It looks terrible. I'm sorry. Well, it kind of looks like a Taurus, which I guess is the point, since you originally lived in Kanto. But uh, I'm digging his switch coloration backpack and hat. It's pretty nice. I don't know, the colors just don't seem to match super well, but then again, I'm somebody who wears jeans and t-shirt like every day, all day, so I don't know. Yeah, right, who are you to judge fashion? Whale of a pan in the background. <laughs> don't walk through tall grass without either a Pokeball with a Pokemon in it or a shotgun. Or a repel, I mean, shotgun's kind of jumping the gun here, so to speak, you see what I did there that kind of thing but at least lily was using like repels by the way lily's in this game guys i know that seems like a spoiler but it's not we've already done this before oh, i really wanted it to be a sequel when maybe we bought back to kanto to see what uh, lily and her mother are doing slight spoilers for the original don't worry you'll uh, see what happens as the game goes along but i don't know the choice to go with the d4c uh, parallel universe thing it's uh it's fine for what it is we'll see the changes as they go along but um yeah yeah, 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 yeah. One thing I do like that we're about to do right now is that this, the early game for Ultra Sun, in comparison to normal Pokemon Sun, the early game books. Yeah. Like, like right here, actually, we're going to meet our starters and we can to choose our starter and then it just kind of runs through everything super fast so you can get into the game. That's appreciated, but at the same time, it kind of lends credence to the fact that they really should have done this in the original game to begin with. That's going to be like the core of my complaints. Like, why didn't they do this in the original game? Nintendo, what's wrong? That kind of thing. Well, I think it's less of they should have put it in the original and more of they hadn't thought of it by the original. Like, they always have core ideas for the, uh, the base game and then they just improve upon that. Where if you agree with that big business practice is up to you but um i'm gonna say nay or yay both of them at the same time well that really does depend on the context where i mean patches are one thing but then making the new version of the game selling it all uh capcom you know that's always going to be a little dicey no matter how good you do it so it's something you have to take in stride i was scared spitless professor kukui I have a thing going on. I mainly kind of do this for a little fun on the side. I kind of, I was kind of coming up with how the canon, quote unquote, for like my trainer mm. in like Pokemon Sun. I like to think that he tries to swear, but he always has to do the, like the G-rated versions of words. It's like, what in the spit is this? Or what in the heck? You know, just really nerdy kind of dorky kind of swears. And of course, the best swear of them all, G-rated, damned. D-A-M-N-T. <laughs> Oh, I don't even watch HFC, bless. So, yeah, we're not going to go with uh, Fire Kitty this time, mate. It being Parallel Universe time, I figured it's time for us to switch things up a little bit and go with a different starter. Ah, yes. Here's a spoiler. It's probably not going to be the seal, because I don't think anybody likes the seal. <laughs> Well, funny you should say that, in uh, my Ultra Moon casual run, which I also abandoned, because Breath of the Wild came along and stole most of my time, as you probably know by watching the Spirit Tracks yeah, playthrough, yeah. I uh, I went with Poplio, just to, uh, you know, because I, I very rarely go with water starters. He's okay, I suppose, I've evolved him, he's not as, as at his final stage right now, but yeah, we're going to go with Rowlet, process of elimination and all that. So you know, your seal is a dude, right? I mean, like, you were able to check the gender and everything? I don't really see where that matters, honestly. <laughs> well, you know, Primarina always looks like a girl no matter what, so I don't know. The starters didn't have a tendency to be male, so you always want to make sure. I'm just going to ignore that. So yeah, we're going to go with Perfect Roundness. Look, he's already doing tricks for us. I always confuse Rowlet's spelling. I think it has two T's, but it does not. It has the one solo T. It's kind of hard to... Well, I mean, I can understand why you make that mistake. I mean, the second T could very well be silent for that. So, I mean, either one would work. 13 silent T's. Rather... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I imagine that. Some asshole writing it that way. Uh, Alright, let's see. Rowlet, do you choose me? Stare deep into my grey soulless eyes. Yeah, well, beware. He is going to take your soul if he keeps doing that. Why wouldn't you go for perfect roundness, though? He's like the best. He's perfectly spherical. That's it, spherical. Spherical, the Okama Rowlet Sphere. There we go. Yeah, we're going to give Rowlet a nickname. Hell Dragon and I decided upon this before recording any of this here playthrough. And a um, bit of a callback to when THD and I duked it out at the end of the original playthrough. We are going to call him Echo Knight. Now, if in case you don't remember, I tend to name my Pokemon after video games twenty months. And Echo Knight is actually a horror game that takes place upon it's on the PlayStation and it takes place upon a abandoned cruise ship made by this little studio you may not have heard of. Um, from Software, they go on to make some other games down the line that you know aren't really that important. But I just thought I'd let you know that little bit of trivia. Ah, uh, from Software with their hit series Dimly Lit Spirit. I love it. All right, let's go to Icky Town. It is a dirty place, but they're cl they're cleaning up their act, I swear. <laughs> no, ironically, it's actually super pristine. I was like, I don't even know why we don't change the name. Credit where credit's due. Like, some of the changes will be more noticeable than others, but uh, they did put a lot more, like, pretty foliage in on the run-up here, so they have been sprucing up the environments a little bit. Granted, it's still the 3DS, so uh, look at those textures in the background. Oh, boy. But uh, they're trying, bless them. They're trying. Yeah, I guess in the alternate universe, their parks and recreation department is a little bit stronger than what we're used to. <laughs> oh, and since the original Sun playthrough, they've announced a mainline Pokemon RPG for the Switch. How do you feel about that, THD? Well, you know, I feel that was inevitable because after the 3DS, I really don't think we're going to get handhelds going forward. It's obviously going to be focused on the Switch, and I don't think that's necessarily bad. That way, Nintendo can focus all the resources on the one console yeah. for that, and that's actually going to be a lot more efficient. Again, we're going to get a, a more in-depth Pokemon uh, RPG than what we're used to. So I'm excited to see where that will go, actually. All right, our first victim slash Pokemon battle of the game. Echo Knight, show us your stuff. Well, I mean, you've seen his stuff. I demonstrated it absolutely when I defeated you in our final confrontation in the previous playthrough. Okay, to be fair, he kind of got killed really easily, but still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What really troubled me was that deep fear motherfucker you threw out. What was that called again? What's the Pokemon called? The Pokemon is called... Mm... I don't- I remember his pre-form, but not his evolved form. Give me one second. Okay, it's not Toxipex, is it? I think it is Toxipex. Yeah, yeah, no, no, actually, you're correct. That is Toxipex, I remember now. Nice! And then, life just continues. But not for that, Young Goose's family. No, no. No, no. Now around here, um, I don't think he shows up yet, but he shows up a little later. There's actually some points in the game where like little Pokemon kind of go around. And you can like play with them a little bit. Like there's a little Rock Ruff roaming around. And I actually got the Rock Ruff uh, when I pre-ordered uh, the game. Oh, not pre-ordered. I'm sorry. Just bought it normal. You got like the mystery gift for that. He was still on my team. Actually, I called him Missile because he's a Pomeranian. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Hello, how? Yes, your name may be obscured by the question marks, but we know it's you. Oh, bless him. He's as uh, impatient as ever. Yeah, I picked the best Pokemon, so sorry, you're gonna have to become second banana like usual. Aw, oh, and then he literally becomes a second banana. Oh, what a twist! I guess I didn't wait long enough to see if they did more with How in this game as compared to the original for that, but I always thought it was more of a Lily and Gladion focused story anyway. So. Yeah, it kind of is, honestly. I wish How was a bit more aggressive as a rival, because he will always pick, as you may remember from the original games, he will always pick the Pokemon that yours is strong against, and I've never cared for that in a rival. A rival should be someone who pushes you, and granted, his alone and Raichu will do just that later on down the line, but at the start, not so much. 
Hell, I think maybe uh, that Pichu, like, he got, he gets later on. Maybe that should have been considered his official starter for that. But I mean, like, when you split up the characters, uh, you kind of lose the ability to characterize them, ironically enough. So when you have, like, two rivals, you can't really focus on the one like you could in the past. I mean, we all have a fondness for Gary, of course. But that's because Gary had a very clear defined personality, and that's why I feel he was so memorable, especially when you take his anime and, uh, counterpart into consideration. He's very clearly defined, while there's the other other ones just kind of blend together after a while. Hmm. Who's the worst rival, in your opinion? Hmm. I don't know. Like, uh, again, because I've been out of Pokemon so long. Who, who was that guy in Diamond? Was it Barry? Was that his name? Oh, yeah, Barry. He was the, uh, I think the Tower Tycoon's son or something, the blonde guy. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I guess it's because I didn't play a ton of Diamond, but I really don't remember that much about him. I much prefer earlier ones, obviously. Um, I don't even remember the rival that much for Ruby and Sapphire, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Yeah, if you play as a girl, he gets a little bit creepy, let's put it that way. Anywho, Pokemon Trainer How. He has but the one Pokemon, and you have type advantage over it. So you know what that means, it's steamrolling time! You, uh, you guys don't need me to tell you about Pokemon battles, right? I mean, we've already kind of been here, just... <laughs> I know sometimes you get new viewers, I'm just saying, you guys have been awake for the past 20 years, and I'll... Uh, well, we've only been going for roughly about 10 years. 10 years exactly, in March, so, uh, get your presents ready, prepare the tributes. Yeah, the problem is with us starting this in March, um, you know, you kind of lose that neatness where something gets started in January, then it's an exact year. But then you get to January, it's a new year, then you gotta wait a little bit to get to the actual anniversary. It just, it kind of bugs me in an OCD sort of way, but eh. Well, your birthday's at the end of the year, so you must be fucking fuming right now. Eh, uh, well, uh, you know, most of that stuff does get pushed over to Christmas, admittedly, <laughs> so that's just something you gotta take. Oh, beautiful. Echo Knight takes all the experience points and grows to level 6. Of course, 6 traditionally follows 5, so this is the way of things in Alola. Congratulations, Tom. You just did basic math. I hope you're proud. I am. I am. I mean, I'm going to tell my mom after this. She'll be so happy. I'm so glad you recorded this and not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to give Perfect Roundness the tender loving care that he deserves. Uh, look at that blue sky on the big-ass screen on the left. Pokemon beans come back. Apparently, they have no effect based on the color. You can only really focus on the bigger ones to get more affection, that kind of thing. All I know is that all these beans are clearly not going to be good for an owl's diet. I'm just throwing that out there, but there's no peaches around for him to eat live, so let's just kind of do what we can, okay? Yeah, they skip over that factor of Pokemon life. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> a Rowlet swooping down and stealing <laughs> owl's peach and disappearing into the trees. <laughs> uh... Beautiful, perfect roundness. Come back today, later today, for another part of Pokemon Ultra Sun, guys.